Hey, this is Ben Stickmeyer, and you're watching The Voice of the Heroes. Get wrecked! What's good, everybody? It's your host, the one and only and only one, Fleetwood Jetson, and you're listening to the number one anime podcast in the world, Voice of the Heroes. So if you're tuning in for the first time, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss anything when it comes to interviews, discussions with your favorite heroes and villains from around the world. And today we got a very special guest. We got Aaron Michael in the building. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? What's up? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm doing good. Doing That's good. What's up, you? man? You played in two amazing animes straight off the bat this year, man. One of them is my personal favorite and should be nominated if not win anime of the year that's solo leveling and the other one is one that kind of went under the radar but was such a great first season the witch and the beast right out of the two characters that you played in both of these animes which one did you enjoy dubbing the most um man i'll tell you solo leveling to answer your question first, because uh, <laughs> that's such a such an awesome show. Yes, um, it is. But I I will say when uh, when Jeremy Eman brought me in for uh, Witch and the Beast, um, he told me he was looking for a uh, sort of a voice profile match for Drew Breedlove because these guys were were twins uh, in that episode, and uh, he was listening to some things and he told me he liked my voice matching Drew Breedlove, and I was like. Oh, thanks so much. Wow, that means so much. So that was a really cool moment for me. Um, but yeah, Solo Leveling is such a great show. I was excited to uh, be able to jump in on that. I wouldn't mind seeing you coming back as another character or something. We know it greenlit for another season, so that's pretty dope. Um, I haven't heard too much about a second season on The Witch and the Beast, but I'm pretty sure it's going to get greenlit for another season as well because it definitely was a a great anime and I would like to explore that role again but you know I know that you do a lot of stage and on camera um acting as well what do you think are the biggest differences between voice acting and maybe stage acting or on camera ah uh, man um okay so biggest differences between uh theatrical work and on camera work obviously you're on stage uh, in front of a live audience, likely. Um, and so hang on, I'm trying to get my setup done. So you, um, you have a lot of physicality, a lot of movement and area to work with. And, you know, you've got the stage to work with, so you can move around, you can add a lot of this, a lot of flourish and a lot of flares, um, on camera, there's a lot more, um, I won't say more, but different, uh, technique involved in knowing your framing knowing mm. what uh whether they're close or far away because if you've got a you know a wide angle lens and they're really close you've kind of got some movement to work with and if they pull back you've got a little bit more but if they're far away and they've got a tight angle lens you know over 100 millimeters or something um and they're really close up on you uh you've got to be still you've got to contain everything and pull it all in. And so um, you've got to think about doing your acting the same, the same scene, and you're doing it, you know, 10, 15 times for all sorts of different angles and all sorts of different takes. Uh, but you're offering different types of performances mm -hmm. for, you know, your framing and such. And for voiceover, uh, you've got to go back to a theatrical mindset. Um, but pull in your body language and contain yourself as much as you can because you're in a confined space. You don't have a lot of room to move around yeah. and swing your arms because you got a microphone right in front of you. So you have to deliver that theatrical body language in that character voice acting um, because that's what that's what gets your voice, you know, active up and down. Um, but you've got to do it in a confined space. Mm, out of the three, which one you think is the most difficult? Oh man, that, it, difficult. I don't know. It just depends on uh, what you like to do. Cause if you like to do it, you know, it's all worth the effort. <laughs> <laughs> I respect it. If you did have a preference, right? Say right now, Marvel DC called you to voice act one of their great heroes or villains. Which one would you choose? Cause I know y'all don't get a lot of options. You don't get to really choose your roles, but if you could choose, 
out of a hero or a villain, which one would you go with? Oh, man. That's so tough. That's so tough. I love Superman, first of all. But I don't think I, 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 I may could, you know, find a Superman voice in there somewhere. Just bring him into a very, I don't know, some, some Superman voice. I don't know if I, uh, uh, no, I, I won't put that out in the universe. I love Superman. <laughs> Superman would be great. Uh, obviously, the Joker is such a fun uh, character, such a, uh, such a fun villain. Um, but there's so much, you know, so much uh, voice history behind the Joker. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I would be yeah. stepping into big shoes for sure. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I love uh, I love a good villain. I know this is voice of the heroes, but I love a good villain. So I'd probably say, uh, <laughs> let me play with the Joker. Let me I fun with my own Joker and go 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 crazy and do my own fun things with the Joker. It'd be a lot of fun. Nah, I love it because Joker is such an iconic villain. He's probably one of the most popular villains out there. You know, you have only people I think that that are more probably iconic than him, probably like Darth Vader or something like that. Yeah. That I can see, but he's he's up there. He's one of the best villains in the world. So I could definitely see why you say that. Do you watch any of the anime you work on? Because I know a lot of actors, they, they, they do work, and they might not never watch the anime or the show that they did the work for. They just treat it like a nine to five type thing. Do you, do you, you know, explore the animes and things like that, that you voice in? Yeah. Uh, sometimes I do. I, so like, I love my hero and um, the first season was actually going on about the same time. Uh, was actually uh, recording about the same time that I started working at Funimation. So mm. it was, it was, um, and that was actually kind of when I got into my hero uh, seeing that, but I knew I knew what kind of show it was, and uh, Colleen. I was lucky that Colleen just brought me in for a bit part in that, so that was exciting. So I've been watching that, you know, since since then, uh, and I love that show. Some shows you come across, and uh, you, you, maybe you do you do some small bits in it, you do some walla or something like that. Um, but I definitely love to check out uh, the show if I know what I'm going in for or at least what show it is, I'll, I'll definitely watch the, that episode and try to get caught up just so I'm familiar with what's going on uh, before I go in the booth. So, but I, I do, when, you know, when you find a good show, you want to watch it and then getting to getting to join and, and play along is, is just double the fun. Yeah, that's amazing. I asked you to ask this, right? Because we're going to talk about your Mount Rushmore of anime characters. This ain't got to be the popular choice. This ain't got to be the most powerful who are your top four anime characters in the world? Like, who would be on your Mount Rushmore? Um, I think the heroes. I think uh, Goku and All Might, I think, are my first two that pop into my head. Um, mm, great choices. I just, I get, like I said, I love Superman. It's it's along those lines. I love, um, I love you know, that that hero that's got to not only struggle with their own power but struggle internally with uh their own their own heroic inhibitions don't kill you know save save everyone that you can <laughs> um and i think uh you know which came first the chicken or the egg i don't know but i think that inspires me in a way or speaks to my personality of like just wanting to do as much good as i can um in the world and that often means sacrifices so i think that's that's that lesson i take from those kind of heroes um mm -hmm. let's see how many presidents are on my rushmore four five <laughs> four 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 so uh yeah, four. yeah goku. all my goku um man i don't know um you know S S spike spiegel Cowboy Bebop, I, you know, I love, I love Cowboy Bebop. That's such, hey, a, such an awesome shout out, show. shout out that man, Steve Blum, man. I actually Blum, just got yeah. to see him, man. Big shout out Steve Blum. Yeah, nice. Um, I, I mean, anything Steve Blum does is, is, is great. Uh, let's see. Uh, I want to, I, I mean, can I, can I bring in like Clone Wars? Like, is that, does that count? That's not, that's <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll let it, we'll like, let it original, count. Star Wars Clone Wars was uh was a bit more anime. Uh did you say that does count? Can I count it? Yeah, you can count it. Who are you gonna yeah. go with? Anakin out of there? Yeah, probably Anakin. I mean great voice work, uh, but he's such a great character too, you know. And the way 
the way the uh, Clone Wars was able to develop him as a, as a character introducing Darth Vader, you know, it's a really solid story. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay, okay. Tell us a little about yourself now, right? What was you doing before um, acting, and what inspired you to become an actor? So I, um, my mom got me into music as a young kid. I started on piano, and oh, uh, I played. Interesting. Yeah, I played in uh, in uh, the school orchestra. I um, started playing uh, started playing viola when I was eleven, um, and I played in orchestra all throughout high school. And so I, my senior year in high school, it was kind of a toss up between uh, if I wanted to um, be a musician or uh, uh, be an astronaut. <laughs> oh, and so, oh, big dreams. Yeah, I had, uh, I had, I don't know, some big goals. I love, I love, I've always loved physics. I've always loved the idea of space and everything, but I was, um, I was sitting in my physics class and uh, Dr. Day, the uh, physics professor of uh, my senior year was uh, starting the, starting his lecture for the day. And uh, I had been simultaneously taking jazz piano lessons. Um, and I had, I had sort of like had some, some stuff I was playing through in my head. I was just sitting there at my desk kind of going through it. And I look up and the board is just full of all sorts of math and equations. And I was like, <laughs> at, at this point, I had been uh, talking to uh, like the, the liaison at the Air Force Academy in Colorado about uh, going in for, uh, uh, was it aeronautical engineering, astronautical engineering? Uh, and I was mm. like, yeah, I mean, you know, I could go go through the Air Force Academy, maybe be a pilot. Uh, I know I'm a little tall, but uh, whatever, we'll, we'll see. But I remember just looking up at the physics board and I was like, <laughs> what? Oh, I don't know about this one, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought about what distracted me and it was the art and the jazz of music uh, that I was going through in my head. And I was like, yeah, I think I know what I need to do with my life. Um, so I actually uh, applied to music school uh, on after that, um, starting on viola, and uh, I got accepted to uh, Oklahoma City University uh, here in Oklahoma City. And then I uh, moved on to get my master's in violin performance, um, and OCU is where I met my wife. And oh, um, that's dope. Yeah, so I'd been. Um, congratulations! I'd been, that's how long y'all been together since thank college you. Um, day? 14, 14 years. Oh since man, we, we've been married for 14 years. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah. So, so that was, that was my life before I started acting. I'd been in music and uh, playing in orchestras and symphonies around the area and um, doing uh, quartet work. Uh, my wife plays harp. So her and I have a harp and violin duo. Oh, uh, we've dope. done weddings and parties and all sorts of things. So uh, yeah, I've been a professional musician for, you know, all my life, basically. And I was looking for, because I was very nervous on stage, um, I would get up in solo performances and competitions and just, just be shaking. And that's not good when you're holding, holding an instrument and you're trying to play and your hands shaking and you can't get your bow to stabilize. Yeah. So I was looking for a way to um, get over my nerves on stage. Uh, as a as a performer in general, and so I just looked up acting class. My wife and I were sitting watching TV. We were watching a movie, um, Twelve Monkeys, with uh, Bruce Willis, Brad Pitt, all of that. And Good movie, such too. a great movie. Yeah. And I remember thinking, man, I bet I could do that. <laughs> and <laughs> as silly as it is to think, yeah, yeah, you just jump into it. Um, I really took to acting. I got bit by the bug. I started doing uh, some improv classes and some on-camera classes. And uh, it was helpful in getting used to being on camera, getting used to my nerves and what that was all about. But it was really fun. And so I took to, took to looking for as much on-camera work, got an agent, and, and just kind of went from there. And um, I was doing uh, doing a lot of stage improv uh, and going to conventions, and uh, that's where I got connected with um, Caitlin Glass. And uh, in about 2015, 16 or so, I think it was, and um, just started to explore voiceover, uh, voice acting, 
and got into audiobooks from there. And so, uh, yeah, I've just been, just been, ex it started off with, uh, to go back to the original question, it started off with looking for a way to get over my stage nerves and get over the, uh, the excitement and slash fear of, of performing. And it turned into getting bit by the bug and just loving every minute of it. And uh, then I uh, started working a little bit closer with uh, Caitlin on a project and she uh, was able to bring me in for just, I don't know, just feeling out the waters of voiceover. Uh, Cause back in the Funimation days, it was kind of just like, yeah, come on in. We'll just try it out. Um, and that's when I got sucked into that. Mm, how long have you been with Funimation? Uh, 2017, I know for sure. Ooh, I don't think I did it okay. in 2016. So I think that's kind of got pulled into that about 2017 was one of my uh, first sessions. What do you think is the biggest misconception about voice acting? Um, is probably you've probably heard this before, but probably, oh, I have a really cool voice. Maybe I could be a voice actor, um, <laughs> and not not necessarily in the way you think. Like, yeah, if you've got a cool voice, you can probably be a voice actor. But even if you don't have a cool voice, you can definitely be a voice actor, uh, because I can't tell you the amount of auditions, commercial auditions that come in saying we want you know a normal, average, everyday voice for whatever project it is. So I think one of the misconceptions is that if if you have a cool voice, you can just do it or it's not something that can be trained or taught because it's an acting skill. It's voice acting. <laughs> so mm -hmm. learn how to act uh, and then you can be a voice actor. It's really it's really that. But the acting has to come first. Um, and I think that's that's one of the things I see a lot. Um, in uh, some people that I, some beginners that I talk to about it is they want to really focus on, on their voice and how do I sound? And that's a first hurdle. Definitely get used to, you know, how you sound, but you want, you want to learn how to act, learn how to look at a line and say, what's the intention? What's the goal? How do I, how do, how does my voice, how does this character serve the story? What are we doing in this scene? Um, and learning the acting tools that are necessary for theater on camera, voiceover, all of it, uh, learn those acting tools definitely i respect that are there any upcoming or ongoing anime series that you would like to be a part of like you've seen and you was like man i would love to get into that um i mean i'd, I'd always love to uh be in my hero again my hero is one of those i've done a few bit bit roles in that and i uh, got brought in for glutton god i think it was season six um that, that was one of my do. favorite seasons too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's super, such a great show. I love it. I can see my my little all my back back there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I'd love to jump back in to uh, my hero in any capacity. It'd be great. Um, I heard they got some spinoffs on the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, if you if you follow the manga, then you're gonna know. There's, uh, I think, I think vigilantes. Maybe spoilers. I don't know if we don't want to do that, mm. but uh, I think there's uh, some vigilante stuff uh, coming up, which which would be fun. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I like. I mean, anything Dragon Ball, anything Dragon Ball. I'd love. Yeah, to, they got a couple of new Dragon Ball shows coming out too, so that would be pretty dope. Speaking of animes, what are your top three animes of all time? Your opinion only. They could be new, old. What are your top three? All right, so I'm gonna say Cowboy Bebop. It's um, it's a niche kind of show, but it's so lovely. It's such a great show. Um, I think uh, Dragon Ball. It was very, it's very nostalgic for me. Dragon Ball Z. Um, growing up watching that, uh, and I, I think I've already talked to him. My hero. <laughs> I love my yeah, hero. I, I, it's such hey, a good show. There's nothing wrong with that, man. I'm a huge My Hero fan too, and a yeah. Naruto fan. So any type, any kind of list. I get asked about it some. Those two are definitely in it. That's pretty yeah. dope. All right. Are there any upcoming projects or conventions coming up that you could talk about? Yeah, um, I'd love to. And uh, one of the shows that I've just started recording on recently is uh, with Story of Wand and Sword. Um, mm. Super great show. Uh, Can you tell they, us a little about, about it? Yeah. Uh, uh, Jeremy Eman brought me in for um, Julius. And uh, I'm just so excited to be diving into 
a villain role <laughs> like this. Um, okay. I say villain antagonist role. Uh, we'll see how he how he develops throughout the series. Uh, but that's that's gonna be a lot of fun. I started. I just started watching that show, and it's so fun. The music is great. Uh, my wife loves Kiki, the little uh, familiar key cat uh, he's got. <laughs> um, and it's a great looking show as well. So that's that's really exciting for me, uh, being able to jump into that. Um, theatrical wise, um, Hamlet is running at Oklahoma Shakespeare in the Park through September. Uh, I'm able to jump in as uh, Bernardo of Ford and Bros. And okay. uh, Hamlet runs through, they're, they're doing uh, Macbeth right now. Hamlet runs through uh, September, I think our first show is the 12th. Um, September so 12th? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, for three weeks in September. Um, you can check that out at, I don't know, just Google Oklahoma Shakespeare in the Park. <laughs> Shakespeare in um, the Park. I might check that out myself, man. But by yeah. the way, Heroes and Villains, all links will be in the comment section below just in case you want to check it out yourself if you're in the Oklahoma area, things like that. And let them know where they can find you at, man, on social media. Aaron Michael, VA, um, across the board. Across Instagram, the board, Twitter, TikTok, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Yeah. It was a pleasure talking to you, man. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Um, any conventions coming up? You gonna be at any conventions? Got some details on uh, Super Anime Fest is coming up. I'm gonna be uh, jumping in to help out an MC on the 21st, 22nd. Uh, that's uh, Edmund Supercon, but you can check out uh, superanimefest.com. And then uh, I'm joining them again in November. And so that'll be a lot of fun. They've got shows in Lawton in Oklahoma. Um, let's see. Middell, uh, Dell City. Uh, check out superanimefest.com if you're Hey, I'll definitely the Oklahoma check out that area. Oklahoma show. <laughs> yeah. For real, for real. Definitely. Heroes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more discussions and interviews with your favorite voice actors from your favorite shows. And heroes and villains, don't forget that PS5 giveaway is still happening. September 1st, it ends. So to enter, all you got to do is leave a like, comment, and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Besides that, heroes, we're out. Have a good one. Sing it with me, pretty Cali, pretty, pretty Cali.